Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing? I've been running around like a crazy person. Oh, sorry I'm so late, but I got stuck Christmas shopping. I had everything set up. My plan was to come in here at 7.30. And then uh, I was in the midst of Christmas shopping. I had to eat dinner. Anyway, I don't really have any good excuses, but I'm late and I'm sorry if anybody is like, oh, she's late. I'm not going to watch her anymore. Then I'm sorry about that. Okay, my name is Charm and this is my ministry called Awesome Treasures Ministry. And I feel like God called me to this ministry in 2018 when I quit my job that I had been doing for like 27 seasons. And I started homeschooling my son. So I've been on a different part of my Christianity journey since 2018. And something that um, a big blessing that I received from having a more relaxed um, schedule is I have more time for quiet time in the mornings. I do my quiet time in the mornings and I have more time. It's more quality time. Uh, and um, anyway, that is my perk from not having a busy, busy schedule like I used to. So I hope you had an awesome Sunday. I had an awesome Sunday. Went to church with my family. We went in separate vehicles, but we went to the same church. We arrived at different times, but we ended up at the same church, and um, we had great worship and fellowship, and Sunday school was awesome. It was just a reminder to me that I need to be more consistent about doing this, because sometimes what God calls us to do, it's like Jonah, and we talked about Ezekiel today just about Jonah, like Jonah and Ezekiel, God doesn't always call us exactly to what we want to do. He doesn't always call us to what we're comfortable with. This is my cat, Gracie. She may be vacating soon, but she did come and Okay, well, all right. Adios then. Let's see if she left me anything. Okay, I need to warm her. So I was seeing if she left any worm segment. <laughs> if anyone knows anything about worming cats, then please put it in the comments because this is my first time. Um, I think I'm going to do it Tuesday so I can be home with her all day in case something happens drastically. All right. Well, tonight we are going to do Psalms 53 and 54 haven't written it down yet. Like I said, I've been Christmas shopping. I like to write it down so that I don't do the same one again. If I can uh, keep up with it that way, it sure does help. My calendar is still on November. I need to switch it over to December. Okay, let's begin in prayer, and then we are going to read Psalm 53 and 54, and I really don't feel led to read anything else tonight. Um, I just do want to start being more consistent, and I want to do like 30, a little over 30 minutes at a time. I don't want to go into an hour like I used to. I used to do a really, really long one. I think I get more views when it's shorter, so we're going to stay with shorter. Let's begin in prayer. God, we just thank you. We thank you for this time that we can come and we can learn more about your word, God. You are the great Jehovah. You are the great I am, and you are on your throne, and you are in control. There is nothing that is happening here in this world that you do not see, that you do not know every detail about that you do not have a solution for and you do not already know the outcome. God, we trust you fully. Thank you for being our creator. Thank you for being our provider, our protector, 
our shelter in the storm, our strength and our refuge. God, you are mighty and powerful and magnificent, and you are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness according to your truth. And God, you are loving and kind and compassionate and caring. You are faithful and you are trustworthy. Thank you for uh, loving us. Thank you for calling us as your children. And you are also patient, God. You want none to perish. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And God, we just pray for the lost. We just pray that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus, that you would open their hearts and their minds and their eyes, God, to the truth, that they would be saved through Jesus. We pray for all the prodigals to come home, God. We pray for them to remember the relationship, the peace, the joy, the contentment that they once had, and that they would return to you, that they would repent, and that they would be reconciled, God. God, there's just so many disastrous things going on, like the school shooting. I heard today, too, there were some buses that crashed in Andrews, Texas, or from Andrews, Texas, God. We just lift those families up to you, too. I heard that the bus driver got killed. God, I heard that um, there was a law enforcement officer that lost his life also. God, just so much, just so much. Every day, God, there is something. We just lift up all these families to you, God. We just pray that you would give them peace, comfort, and strength, God that they would feel your presence, that they would heal, that they would be met with the hands and feet of Jesus, the loving compassion of Jesus. God, that these tragic things would draw them closer to you, closer into a relationship with you. And if they do not have Jesus as their Savior, that it would draw them into salvation through Jesus. God, we pray for um, the weather, the storms that are coming. God, we pray for protection now. Um, I know it's going to hit the south pretty hard. It looks like the southeast is going to be hit maybe the hardest. And we just pray now for them. All the states in between as this cold front comes down from Canada, God, that we would be able to keep our electricity on that we would be able to stay warm. There wouldn't be anyone that would have to do without heat, would have to do without electricity, that even the people, God, that live on the streets, because they have no place to live, God, that there would be a warm place for them to go. We also pray for all the people that have lost loved ones, God. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them and for them to feel your presence in their time of loss. Pray for all those that are sick, God. We just pray for healing and for strength and for strength for their families. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, all right, my praying share warriors. I love to pray to God. And you know what? These psalms are pretty short. I don't even know if I have any. Yeah, I have some study notes at the bottom. All right, so that is good. That's a good thing. All right, again, I hope you had a wonderful day today. I hope that if you have a church family, that you were able to spend some time with your church family, learning more about God's word and um, worshiping. And we did our Lord's Supper today, so it was a very special day as a church family to get together and do the Lord's Supper. So that's what we did today. So let's see what Psalm 53 is about. It says, Folly of the Godless in Restoration of Israel. That sounds like I already read that. Maybe not. Maybe it's just comparable to 51. Okay. I don't think I did. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> All right. Well, let's just read it. We might need to read it again. Folly of the, God of the Godless in Restoration of Israel. 
The fool has said in his heart, no, we haven't, we haven't, there is no God. They are corrupt and have done abominable iniquity. There is none who does good. God looks down from heaven upon his children of men to see if there are any who understand, who seek God. Every one of them has turned aside. They have together become corrupt. There is none who does good. No, not one. Have the workers of iniquity no knowledge, who eat up my people as they eat bread, and do not call upon God. There they are in great fear, where no fear was. For God has scattered the bones of him who encamps against you. You have put them to shame, because God has despised them. Oh, that the salvation of Israel would come out of Zion. When God brings back the captivity of his people, let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. You know, this kind of is parallel to what we were studying today in Ezekiel. In Sunday school, it was about Ezekiel being sent out to tell the Israelites, you know, God's truth and to share with them God's truth and how he didn't want to go. He didn't want to go, and he saw this vision from heaven that he didn't understand. And he was so confounded by it that he just went and sat for seven days. <laughs> he couldn't figure it out. But he eventually did, you know, go and do what God asked him to do. So I believe that's what it's saying. It's saying, you know, God is looking from heaven to see who is following him and who is not. So let's see what my Bible says about the foolish person. Like spiritual discernment, not intelligence, the opposite of folly is steadfast devotion to the Lord. So if you have any comments about Psalm 53, um, Someone shared with us about a man that he witnessed to, and he said there is no God, and he walked out of the room. And so this, the first of this kind of reminds me of what our brother shared with us today. So let's move on to Psalm 54. Answered prayer for deliverance from adversary. adversaries. Adversaries. Answered prayer for deliverance from adversaries. To the chief musician with stringed instruments, the contemplation of David, when the, the Ziphites went and said to Saul, Is David not hiding with us? Okay. And so this is what it says. Save me, O God, by your name. And vindicate me by your strength. Hear my prayer, O God. Give ear to the words of my mouth. For strangers have risen up against me, and oppressors have sought after my life. They have not set God before them. Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is with those who uphold my life. He will repay my enemies for their evil. Cut them off in your truth. I will freely sacrifice to you. I will praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. For he has delivered me out of all trouble. And my eyes, and my eye has seen its desire upon my enemies. So again, David was continually, continually uh, pursued by his enemies. David was a mighty warrior too. But he was constantly calling out to God for help against his enemies, against his adversaries. Okay, let's see what the study part says. David affirmed his faith in God as his helper. The superscription connects this psalm with a time when the Ziphites betrayed David's hideout to Saul. David prayed for deliverance from his enemies, calling on God's name. So King David was quite a warrior. And 
he was pursued by his enemies a lot. But he knew that God was his helper. And he knew that God was his strength. And he knew, he knew where to go when he was in trouble. And that's to God. He would pray to God when he got in trouble. That was kind of a short psalm. I'm not going to go on to 55. I'm just going to end right there at 54. And I may not be on here for quite 30 minutes. Uh, let's see. How do we, let's do this. Between you and God. This is another E3 resource. I believe that somebody colored on this one. It's kind of fun to get things from our church that the kids have colored on. Okay. All right. So this is the first part. I'm going to try to upgrade my camera tonight. I'm working on that. Okay. So our sin separates us from God. The light on the right represents God is perfect, holy, and loving, and has provided a way for salvation. In contrast, the man in darkness represents man in his sin. Separated from God, separated from God, sin is more than wrong thoughts or actions, but a heart that is inclined towards evil. And that's in Jeremiah 17, 9. The Bible says, all his sin and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 Apart from God's grace, man is without hope. Well, let me show you this picture. Okay, this is man in the darkness, and this is God in the light. Jesus paid the debt for our sin. The cross is a picture of God's grace. God sent his own son, Jesus, to earth as a Jesus died on the cross for us so that he might take away our sin. 1 John 3, 5. The Bible says God demonstrates his own love for us. In this, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. Jesus took away our sin in his own body on the cross so that he could bring us to God. Uh, 1 Peter 2, 24 and 1 Peter 3, 18. Bible says, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. John 3, 16. There is nothing we can do on our own to pay the penalty for our sin. If we could, then God would not, then God would not have sent his son to die for us. Only the blood of Jesus can wash away our sin. So this picture is Jesus on the cross. That's what it's talking about. Okay, this is the next part. All right, these three parts are the next part. After Jesus died, men buried him in a tomb, sealed with a huge stone and guarded by soldiers. Jesus is risen. Three days later, God raised Jesus from the dead, declaring that he truly is the Son of God and that God was satisfied with his payment for sin. Jesus then appeared to many people before returning to his Father in heaven. Jesus is the way. The only way we can come to God is through faith in Jesus Christ. Only Jesus has paid the penalty God's, God demands for our sin. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father, God, except through me, John 14, 6. But just knowing these facts does not ensure salvation. We must respond to God's grace by trusting in Jesus Christ alone as the only one who can forgive our sin and give us God's gift of eternal life. This is the next part.
Trust only in Jesus. The penalty for sin is eternal separation from God. But Jesus offers you the free gift of eternal life with God. We need to accept this gift God offers. The way we demonstrate our faith in Jesus Christ is by trusting in him alone for a complete payment of our sin. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Bible says that our sin is removed through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. Romans 3.22. Romans 3.22. I can't speak tonight. Are you trusting in Jesus for your salvation? And then it says you can. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. If you are trusting in Jesus for your salvation, tell God by praying something like this. And again, this prayer does not save you. It is the belief of who Jesus is, what he did. Dear God, thank you for loving me. I confess that I have sinned against you. I believe that your son Jesus died on a cross to pay for my sin and that you raised him from the dead. I trust Jesus alone to forgive me and take away all my sins. I confess that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Thank you for your gift of eternal life. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember, it's not the words of a prayer that save you. God saves you when you respond in faith to his grace. If you trusted in Christ today, Jesus promises you in John 10, 27, 28, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I will give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. Okay, so just like the bracelet. These are the same people that make the bracelets that I do the thing with. You have all these emblems. You have a heart. You have a praying man. You have a Bible. You have fellowship. And you have sharing the gospel. It says, because you were saved by the precious blood of Christ, you should follow God and learn to please him. Here are some of his requirements for you to grow spiritually. Now, I want to be clear. Your salvation does not rest on this. But your growth does. Your spiritual growth rests on this. If you want to grow spiritually, if you want to grow closer to God, then we have to love God and all people. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind. This is the great and foremost commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Matthew 22, 36 through 40. Pray. Pray to God constantly. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known to God. Study the Bible, which is God's word. That's what we read earlier. Uh, daily. You know, try to read it daily. You don't have to read a lot. Just read a chapter. Read a half a chapter. Read five verses. Just set a goal and try to read something every day. Start with the Gospel of John. Read one chapter per day. Like newborn babes, long for the pure milk of the Word. 
that by it you may grow in respect to salvation. I say start in Matthew. I say read the Gospels. Learn about who Jesus is. Who did you just accept as your Savior? Go and read about Jesus. Meet regularly with other Christians, not forsaking our own assembling together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. Hebrews 10, 25. And then tell other people about Jesus. And he, Jesus, said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Mark 16, 15. So that's why I'm doing this, because God has called me to share his truths and share the gospel of Jesus. So I just choose a different track every night. That's old right. And I share that way. And so if you did accept Jesus as your Savior, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. Your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and the angels are rejoicing. There's like a little party going on in heaven. All right. Well, I am going to do God's blessing and pray and get out of here and go finish shopping. That's I've done church and I've done shopping today. That's what that's what my day is consisted of. All right, in Numbers 6, 24 through 26, it says, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. That is a blessing from God to you, to all of us. He wants us to... Be blessed. He wants us to have peace. He wants us to walk in the fruits of the Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That is how he wants us to walk as Christians. All right, I am going to pray. Oh, and if, if there's anything that you want to put in the comments, please leave me some comments. Leave me prayer requests. Leave me anything you want to say. All right? So let's pray. God, we just praise you and thank you for all that you are and for all that you do, God. We just pray that you would help us to be bold, to go out and share your truths and to share the gospel of Jesus, to just help us to be who you need us to be and that you would um, help us to, um, to walk in your ways, God. You would, uh, anyone that comes here, that you would bless their families, that you would bless them that you would protect them, that you would provide for them, God, that you would lead them. But if there's anyone that comes here that needs to have Jesus as their Savior, that the Holy Spirit would draw them to Jesus. I just thank you for my friends and my family members, God, that I count as blessings that you have placed in my life. And I just pray that you would keep them safe and that you would bless them and protect them and provide for them. God, we just pray for um, a Jesus movement that no one can stop in our country and all across the world, God, that the name of Jesus would be lifted up and glorified and that there would once again be unity in our country and in our churches and that it would be all under the banner of the love of Jesus. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So I wanted to say, too, I have a few new subscribers, and I want to say welcome, new subscribers. Please uh, put something in the comments 
about what drew you to this ministry. And um, just let's develop a community. I know I talked about this. I watch a lot of YouTube videos. And I want to develop a community like some of them have. I know I will never have as many followers as they have and that's okay with me i don't really care i'm not doing this for fame i'm doing it to sh uh to be obedient to share god's truths and to share the gospel of jesus and right now god is telling me the most important thing to him is salvation and reconciliation well that means salvation is new believers being saved by Jesus, reconciliation is prodigal children coming home, people that have strayed away, coming back. So those, that is what this community is about. And I want to testify to the things that God has done for me, and I want to encourage others. And so that's how I plan to encourage people is by developing this community. So we can come together and we won't be on Psalms forever. I still want to do a study of Esther. And I have a really good study book. But I feel like I need to develop a community of people that I can depend on that will come once a week to learn about Esther. So anyway, those are the things that God has laid on my heart. So if God has laid something else on your heart, then please share it. I uh, know that I'm praying for all these many things that have happened. Uh, two of them I just found out about in Sunday school. Uh, there are a lot of people that have lost loved ones. There are a lot of people that are injured from some of the tragic things that have happened. So let's just pray. Let's be a praying community. That's why I call it Pray and Share because I want to get on here. I want to pray and I want to share. And I want you to pray and I want you to share. So good night. Have an awesome rest of your night. And have an awesome Monday. And I should be back on here tomorrow night. The talk about Ezekiel had just really made me think, okay, I've got to be more consistent um, for the nights that I am home. I've got to be more consistent. Anyway, so much love. Cyber hugs. I'll see you again. Good night.